So, have you ever wished that you were born with a superpower or was bitten by a radioactive spider and suddenly acquired one? What if I told you that nearly 70% of the world's population has a superpower that most of them don't know about, and you probably have it too? According to BBC Future, about 70% of the world's population is bilingual, and that number is going up. Um, the demand for speaking multiple languages is growing due to globalization, and this is relatable to many bilinguals throughout the world. Of course, this superpower isn't just playing being bilingual. It's something way cooler. This is like a buy one, get one free situation. You don't only get to be bilingual, you also have multiple personalities. Studies and social experiments show that multilingual people tend to shift personalities while switching between languages. Many bilinguals throughout the world has approved this, including me, as a Chinese and English bilingual. There are many aspects to this, so I'm going to break it down for you. There are three general types of bilingual people, compound, coordinate, and subordinate. First, compound bilinguals. Compound bilinguals are bilinguals that learn both languages side by side at a young age. They are usually born in a multilingual family, community, or live in a foreign country. Second, coordinate bilinguals. These bilinguals grew up with one native language and acquired their other in their teenage to mid-20 years. They are usually fluent in both, but there's one dominant one. Last, subordinate bilinguals. They learn their second language in adulthood, and their new language is considered foreign in their brain, which means that they process everything with their native language before translating it. They'll first construct a sentence or a word in their mind and translate it in their foreign language and able to express it. According to Professor Francois Gross Jean, which has a PhD in psycholinguistics, this personality shift happens to only coordinate and, um, coordinate and compound and coordinate bilinguals, and nearly never on subordinate bilinguals. This is because, according to the critical period hypothesis, at a young age, we use a lot of the right hemisphere of our brain, and it is more emotionally based. And as we go older, we start transitioning to our left hemisphere, which is more logical and rational. Language is practically just a set of grammar, rules, and vocabulary if we learn it at a later time in life. This would make it harder to develop a personality according to your language, since you're not using many emotions. It is also harder to learn a new language the older you get. In my case, I'm a mix between a compound and coordinate bilingual. Even though I started learning both languages since I was a baby, and I'm fluent in both, but my Chinese is still li a little bit more dominant. This is probably because my early education, basically my whole elementary school, was completed in a Taiwanese local school. Now that I'm attending an all-English school, my English has started claiming dominance. Mentioning the environment, this is another factor that greatly affects someone's personality while speaking different languages. Bilinguals usually acquire and use their language in different, for different purposes, in different domains of life with different people. Different aspects of life require different languages, says Professor Francois. In my case, I talk to my family in Chinese, and I use all Chinese out of school since I live in a Chinese-speaking country. Whereas English, I mostly use it academically and at school, and when I hang out with my friends. I would say that there's a bit of mix between the both, since my family and friends are mostly bilingual, but I do feel like Chinese would be my more casual language, since I use it mostly out of school. All in all, the field or domain where you use a language can affect your attitudes and feelings inflicted during the usage. As I mentioned earlier, not every bilingual person will experience this personality shift. Language is also greatly connected to culture. Language can be a cue that activates different culture-specific frames, says the researchers from Barat College. That's a factor to us why we have behavioral changes. Cultures also have varying traditions and general attitudes that may interfere with someone's values and behaviors. To clear things up, by being bicultural and bilingual is completely different. You can live in a European country and speak two different languages, but in the exact same culture. And you can be both British and American and speak the same language. That, this, that's an also, this is also a factor that um, determines whether you'll experience the personality shift. The researchers studied a group of Hispanic women, and they found, found significant data from the different bicultural degrees. They found out that frame shifting, or change in self-perception happens faster in bicultural rather than bilinguals that live in a single culture. Berkeley professor Susan Ervin Tripp led a study on Japanese American women. They were asked to answer the same sentence in Japanese and English. As we all probably know, Japanese culture is often perceived as more polite and respectful and often more conserved. 
The sentence began with, when my wishes conflicted with my family. One of the participants' answer was, it was a time of great unhappiness in Japanese. And the English response was, I do what I want. The researchers observed the clear difference in attitude from this experiment, so they concluded that one's behavior does change when speaking different languages. Language doesn't only delay the effects of Alzheimer's and dementia. It also gives you a special little surprise of shifting personalities. Whether you'll experience this personality shift or not depends on the type of bilingual you are, the domain you use your languages, and the culture you grew up with. It's never too late to stop learning, so choose a foreign language in your electives in school and start from there.